In today's video, we're going to be seeing exactly what we can do with a single core 5800X3D. Now you might be wondering exactly how did I get my hands on a single core 5800X3D? Well, I had to go to the dark web. Nah, I'm just kidding. I had to change the setting in my BIOS. <laughs> now you may be asking yourselves, why? Why are you doing this? Well, it's funny, it's interesting, and well, it's it, it's uh, it's content. Okay, just freaking watch the video. It's 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 content, guys. Now we're gonna be starting off with general usage. Now I will give you a disclaimer. I kept hyper threading enabled just because I wanted to give this single core the best chance it possibly had. It's still a single core doing the work. It's just splitting it more efficiently, I guess. But you know, still a single core. Anyways, with that out of the way, let's get on with it. We're gonna start off with general usability, and honestly, for what it is, it's very snappy. Of course, loading into Windows took a little more time than it usually does logging in as well but after we let everything sit for a bit it honestly was decently snappy i was able to browse the web a little bit edit thumbnails watch youtube chat on discord everything kind of just worked nothing was really super terrible about it it's pretty amazing what a semi-modern cpu can do with just a single core enabled of course you do have to be patient with it sometimes you can't open up a bunch of tabs and expect it to be super snappy i wouldn't edit videos on this single core the rendering times would be terrible and also recording i couldn't record with obs but for general stuff that you do just from day to day honestly i am really surprised i then decided to run a cinebench test just to see what it would actually make in terms of multi-core when I clicked to start the benchmark, I realized it was going to take a while. <laughs> it was definitely going a bit slow. But we ended up getting this amount. And honestly, I mean, I was expecting it to do worse. I've seen quad cores do worse than this, older ones. But it definitely was nothing to write home about. It was, it was okay. And just for reference, this is what it looks like when I have all the threads enabled. It, it, it is glorious. And this is a score, so quite a bit higher, quite, quite a bit higher. But still, for what is a single core two thread CPU, I mean, we're in the quadruple digits, so I mean, it's something. Now this is something you guys probably have been wanting to see, and that's how it games. Now you might just be like insanely surprised to see how well this single core games. And I say well as in like it's decent for a single core, it's not like gonna blow your mind, but no modern games are designed to run on a single core at all. But despite that, I mean it, it does something, and it's a lot better than I expected. Right off the bat we have some Resident Evil 4 remake, and let me tell you this actually is the best performing game of today. <laughs> It is actually insane how, how well this game runs on a single core. I didn't record any actual like number figures for you. I'm purely basing this off of how it looks and how it feels to play the game. I mean, it was a surprisingly smooth experience. It wasn't terrible at all. It had the you know occasional stutter. The only disclaimer to this is that it did take quite a while to load into it. But other than that, once it loaded in, once we got into the match, it was running absolutely fine. The next thing we have is some CS2. For whatever reason, it would not let me get into an actual official public match. Every time I would load in, it would just freeze and all the music would just keep playing and I would see nothing happen on my screen. However, that's a different story when it comes to actual bot matches. During bot matches, I mean, I was playing on deathmatch and it was going just fine. I didn't really see any huge stutters or anything. It felt kind of smooth. I mean, there's a little bit of jitteriness to it, but I mean, it's entirely playable if you love playing bots. <laughs> I would say this is probably just a little bit more playable technically than Resident Evil 4 Remake, but the fact that you can't get into any official public matchmaking means that it's not as playable to me. But I mean, it was it was smooth. I mean, you can have a fun time on CS2 with bots if you want to with a single core, but it's not that much fun, is it? The next game I decided to try was Apex Legends, and let me tell you, this was absolutely miserable. Some of the models like initially did not load in correctly. I don't know if you can see this. Damn, I messed up. We gotta go ball. Oh, like, look at this monstrosity. Also, dropping was absolutely diabolical. The frame rate was in the single digits. So I was just trying to move around my mouse, and it was so delayed. Once I actually got down and dropped, it smoothed out a little bit, but it was 
terribly stuttery. It was like insanely stuttery and stuff wasn't loading in right. I tried to get an item. I got a sniper and I got a scope and like stuff kept unequipping and re-equipping. Like I don't know if this is a ping issue or if the CPU is causing this. I really don't know, but it kept acting very goofy. Eventually I did get Ray to shoot somebody and he just kind of like appeared in the middle of the air. And before I knew it, I was just deceased. <laughs> I don't know what happened. <laughs> Anyways, Apex Legends is not a good game to play with a single core. Um, there's just too many people. It's not going to be a very fun experience for you. The fourth and final game I'm testing is Minecraft. Now, I was honestly expecting this to run pretty poorly, mainly due to the fact that Minecraft is very CPU bound. It's going to be very focused on CPU performance. And I was pretty much right. I mean, it, when things were loaded in though, I mean, it was fine. I even saw it get to a thousand FPS at some point, but as soon as you start moving around at all, it just kind of started stuttering like crazy. At some points, it just completely froze and it was just like unplayable, unplayable. At least the actual generation of the world didn't take long. I think it took like less than a minute, but other than that, it really wasn't that good. Um, Maybe you could lower some settings, lower some stuff to make it a little bit more playable, but with the settings I chose, it's a no-go. Now, would I recommend ever doing this with any CPU ever? No, don't do this. It's just, there's no reason to really do this. There's no use case for this. This is purely just for content, for science, for the funnies, okay? It's just for fun. I just thought it was interesting to see how it would affect overall performance. I mean, it was a lot better than I expected. I expect it to be completely insanely terrible. I just unusable for anything, even just general usage. But honestly, for general usage, it was very snappy, very responsive. Things load up fast. For gaming, it's hit and miss, but Resident Evil 4 Remake really just surprised the hell out of me. I did not expect Resident Evil 4 Remake to run that well at all. Granted, it was Mercenaries mode, so it wasn't single player, so maybe some single player aspects would be really bad. <laughs> but really, what would you expect from a single core? I expected a whole lot less than this. Regardless, it was a lot of fun doing this video, and I hope you guys enjoyed watching this. Stay tuned for other videos. Bye. Thank you for watching. <laughs>